thinking about the subject of this video, it's like, Hola, you amazing artists, and welcome to the studio. We are going to talk about post Artem depression. <laughs> didn't you, you had a recent experience with that, didn't you? Yeah, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the thing that is feeling, feelings. It's nothing more. We actually have gotten a lot of questions from people that it will create like a phenomenal work of art, right? <laughs> they create a phenomenal work of art and they're like, what am I supposed to do after this? This is the thing I want to talk about. It's the low that comes after the high that comes when you've just done something awesome that you're really proud of. It could be a big event you planned. It could be your first show or your first festival. It could be a piece that you're really proud of. In my case, it was a song and music video release for mm -hmm. our band. Just about every big show that we've done, mm -hmm. you know, where we've done like a gallery showing and stuff and the date is set, we're getting everything ready. There's all this running around and then the day happens and it's done. And it's over in like two seconds. Yeah. The thing itself goes by so fast. The time spent leading up to it, whether it's a week, a month, a year, whatever it is, it's that building and it's that anticipation. And I've come to realize that that excited anticipation for a lot of us feels better than the gratification of the thing actually happening. That's actually something that they've researched where they have found that like when you when you are preparing and getting ready for something yeah that the anticipation is what is gratifying we actually like that the song as an example right really hardcore working on the song for the past month working on the music video everything was ready the release date was set we were doing our teaser videos we were sharing tidbits of it out there all that excitement was building to the point where on the eve of the release i was like a kid the morning of the release before I had heard the song, it was like a holiday for me. Yeah. Like a special just for us holiday for our band. So today is the day. Hooray! <laughs> Release day feels like a holiday. Yep. Play Fools, I Fold My Underwear by Better on the Drums. You're Fools, I Fold My Underwear oh my God. by Better on the Drums on Amazon Music. That's so awesome. Oh. The song dropped and it was cool. And then later the evening, the video dropped. It felt like the video was over in two seconds. Yep. And then it happened. I was standing in the kitchen and I was like, oh no, I felt it come on. And I knew what it was because I've been there before. Even knowing what it was and feeling it come on <laughs> doesn't stop it from happening. I was like, what do I do now? I don't even want to do music anymore. I'm not even sure I could ever do something that good again. Yep. Da 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 da. So a couple things. I don't want to just leave you with that. Like, yeah, that sucks. Good luck with it. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is to recognize it for what it is and understand that it's totally normal. There's nothing wrong with you because you feel sad right now after right. this thing has happened. It's really quite common. Yeah. The song went from being like a song. To like being this like, oh. Yeah, I thing. heard myself say like, it's the best thing I've ever done. And that's great, that's a good feeling. Yeah. But how do you come back from that once you've done it? The first thing is to recognize it for what it is. You're having postpartum depression. His brother used to joke after a big show, right? Ton hundreds, thousands of screaming fans. You're on stage, you're like. You're on top of the world. Yeah. You get off stage, you get in your car and you listen to talk radio as you drive home alone. <laughs> Recognizing it for what it is is helpful, but it's not necessarily going to stop it from happening. It's been my experience that it can shorten the duration of it if you don't take it too seriously. I think it's that experience, the more you do it, right? So it's been a long time since you've released music and this mm -hmm. is like a new thing. So like immediately you put all this time and energy into something and you're like, wow, this is, a, this is the best thing that I've ever created, mm -hmm. right? Now you move on to your next thing and now your next thing is the best thing that you ever created. Yeah. And then you push past that and you move on to the next thing and the next thing is the best thing that you ever created. Understanding that like this is one of many best things that you're going to create. And this is one of many low points that I might dip into after said thing. It's kind of like a riptide. Like you don't want to let it sweep you away, 
but mm -hmm. you don't want to swim really hard against it either. It, it's and That's really good. And the way that I do that is to get busy doing other stuff. You started working on your next song. Yeah, right? and here's there's a really important factor to this. You want to get started on your next thing and you want to do it before the first thing concludes. When you're in that low following the high, the last thing you want to do is launch anything. Rafi had the foresight a couple days before this musical release to ask me, have you started on another song? Do you want to? And so we did. And so like with this song in particular, like I have two other songs that I'm working on now because I got them started a few days before the release date came. Getting something else in the works, even if it's a couple days before the, the crescendo of thing one, is really helpful. With me working on several works of art at once, mm -hmm. as soon as I finish something, I'm like, holy shit, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I, th this is the best thing I've ever created, right? I already have like six or seven other works that I'm gonna be finishing. Just about everything I create is the best thing I created at the moment that I created it. Yeah. Which makes sense because you're evolving and growing and you're learning how to use your tools a little bit better. You are just pushing the boundaries and you're learning as you go. And there's kind of a built-in additional benefit, which is like, if you have that little lifeboat and you're on your way to your next thing, it can stop you from obsessing on the thing that just happened. A couple admin things that I have to do following a song release to tie up loose ends with publishing and lyrics and so on and so forth, and they have to happen after the song is live. There's a difference between that and obsessively refreshing your Spotify stats, okay? <laughs> I'm no help with that, because I was like, what does Amazon Music have to say this morning? Listen, if you're gonna, you're gonna, but make yeah. sure you're not just doing that. It's funny because we released the song and um, our distributor's site is down for maintenance for a couple days, so I can't even like check and see how it's doing on there. And it's the same thing at the jewelry bench for me, right? If we have a live sale and I release a collection, it's loads of fun and I'm like riding that wave, but hopefully I already have other pieces on my bench. You release things for the virtual show and that goes by like a whirlwind. You have fun and then like let's say some things don't sell and you could sit there and overanalyze like oh well, why didn't this sell maybe blah 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 or like this sell or you're like excited and you're like oh now I have to ship things versus already working on something because it's the art that inspires us. Mm -hmm. It The art creation, the creation of the music those are the things. And then getting to that finishing point where you're like, wow, this is amazing, or I really love this. Or even if it's like, I love this, yeah, I could improve a little bit. That's the thing, the finality of being done with it. It's done, it's been released. That's the that's like closing a book and not having another book that's the worst. Read. It's like on shows when they leave you on a cliffhanger at the end of the season and you're like, I hate No, you. it's worse than that because when they leave you on a cliffhanger, you still get the high of the anticipation of next season. That's true. It's like when they end a series for good. Oh, when the, when the production company see... is like, we're going to just cancel the show and it's like, Dude! It's a screeching halt to momentum. And yep. look, humans don't like that shit. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. Don't it's that would be like hitting a wall, right? Yep. You don't wanna keep the momentum going. And even still, you know, the end of something that you're really proud of can feel like sad. Yeah. Just like the end of a good book. And, can and that's sad. okay. That's okay. And that's okay. You're still here, you're still creating stuff, you're still you're gonna be moving forward, you're gonna be doing stuff. But the thing is that like that be prepared for that ending to, to feel a little like, oh, mm -hmm. what am I going to do now? You do keep the momentum going and you start on things and then you're doing the things and then you're like, these things are not as good as the thing I just did. What if I never reach that level again? I'm there. I'm there right now. The last thing that you think was your is your best thing was not as good when you got it started. And that's the that's the thing, right? Yeah. That's the thing to keep in mind is like the song I'm working on right now doesn't sound great. It's not there yet. It's in its beginning stages. The song that I just released 
sounded like a dumpster fire until it didn't. That's like a painting. You know, you get done with this gray painting and then you get started on a new one and it's just an ugly haircut the entire time. So you're already going through the dip of creation, right? Because what you're talking about is that dip of creation. Oh, all right, I'm gonna get started on this. And then it's like, oh, this sucks. This sucks, this is horrible. Oh God, it sucks. I suck, everything sucks. Why do I, I don't do know, this? Why do I even do this, right? And you gotta wait for that little point here where it's like, well, maybe. I think this is this might be coming together. It might be coming together. So you gotta give yourself that patience to get to that point. So what if you get to the end of the thing and it really just isn't as good? I just wanna say this, that's okay too. Yep. The next song I write, I might feel like it's the best and my favorite, or I might feel like it's not as good. Not everything you do is gonna be your opus. No. It doesn't work that way. Picasso, for example, there's a handful of pieces that everybody talks about and everybody shares, right? He created a lot of work, thousands of works, right? Not every one was his opus. Boom, move to the next one, good enough. Boom, to the next. And eventually, you're gonna have several pieces. That That's the thing, if that momentum stops, right? Because you're sitting there in this comparison game of like, well, this isn't as good this isn't as good, this isn't as good. You're never gonna be able to create that thing that is unique and better because it's always a comparison. Each piece demands its own attention. That's really the reality of it. Yeah, it's true. I think this is a great subject Thank to you. talk about. I wanted to talk about it because it's normal and it happens, I think, to just about all of us. The more you go through it, the more you realize like, oh, it's okay. Like my existential crisis, I would say lasted about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to days or weeks. Well, it used to last before. longer. I work towards this thing and then once I get there, I'm already thinking about something else. So like the release date happens or I'm gonna release a series or have our show and then we get through the show and then I forget to, to celebrate. To celebrate. And it's really important to celebrate. Celebrate those moments. Be like, hell yeah, I did this. I did this, right? Not Oh, it's the best that I've ever created. You know? And now it's over. <laughs> now it's over. And my final thought is knowing this, because we all do know this, then when you are in the momentum building phase and the thing hasn't happened yet and the anticipation is there and you've got all the excitement and all the nerves and all the butterflies, revel in that shit. Soak it all in. Yes. Take in every moment, knowing it's going to crescendo and then you're gonna be on to the next thing, but really milk that for all that it's worth. How many other people get to experience doing a show and showing your artwork for the first time? Dude, or, there's nothing or like it. Or releasing a song or- Stepping on stage. Stepping on stage, <laughs> publishing a book, and as artists, like, man, we, we have an adventure in our lives and it's like enjoying those moments, enjoying that, that moment where you're like, I'm scared shitless, but I'm gonna do this anyway. I think we are at a good place to end the video. Yeah, so hopefully you guys got something out of that and I'd like to know, have you experienced this? Do you recognize it when it's coming on and how do you manage it? Uh, and what special things do you do for yourself to uh, propel yourself forward through that. Yeah, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I think it's time to say goodbye. I absolutely adore you guys. If you like this and you wanna to subscribe to more, go ahead and click right over here. And yeah, say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.